to the Republic, for which it stands, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, at this time we will call the roll. Dr. Whitehead. Thank you, Madam President. Good evening, everyone. I will now call the roll. Mrs. Broker? Come back to her, please. <laughs> Mr. Calta Jerome? Here. Here. Ms. Emanuel? Present, and I believe Ms. Broker did chime in just then. Thank you, Ms. Broker. Mr. Goldberg? Ms. Reed. Uh, Ms. Seamus. Here. Dr. Serini. Present. Mrs. Soto. Present. And Mr. Weiss. Present. Madam President, we have nine school, boards mem school board members present. Thank you. So up on your screen, you will see the list of meetings both that have passed and upcoming. We are continuing with virtual at this point. We will begin discussions on if, how, when to return to in-person. We just need to make sure that we're doing it thoughtfully, safely, and fiscally conscious. Um, and just before I go into public comment, I want to uh, bring up a couple quick things. First, uh, to Mr. Fazio, this is his last meeting with us. And I just wanna say on behalf of everyone, just a huge thank you for all you've done in the last 10 months. You came in during a challenging time and then we were all hit with the pandemic. So it made things even more interesting. We really appreciate your steadfast confidence and experience and just all the incredible ways you've guided our district and helped us through these challenging times. So I just wanted to extend a thank you to Mr. Fazio and say we'll miss you. Um, second would be that um, the MOU we're going to vote on, I know that this, there has been some um, questions regarding that. We are voting on an MOU, not Alerta. This is part of a process where we are outlining um, in the MOU, if it passes, what would be acceptable terms for a potential Alerta. This still needs to go through the county and through the borough of Phoenixville. So this is one part in a long process. We discussed at length at last workshop meeting in public um, the thoughts and concerns and comments and questions regarding the LERTA, the MOU for the LERTA, and we'll continue to do so tonight. So this is an ongoing discussion that is, that is being had publicly. And finally, with that, we will move into open public comment on any school subject. Dr. Whitehead will read the comments that have been emailed in. They will be limited to three minutes as per our usual comment rules. And if throughout this meeting you feel that you would like to comment, please do not hesitate to email at boardmeeting at PASC.com and we will read the second round of comments um, at the conclusion of the meeting. Thank you and Dr. Whitehead. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> okay, our uh, first public comment is from Mr. John Moraz, Google Township. More than a year ago, I was told in order to have my comments be a part of the permanent record, I had to hand in a written format of my comments. When previous minutes are available to review, I have found that my comments are not included and I have brought this issue up to the board before. The school board apologized once for this. I'm not the only one that has handed in written comments and requested them to be added. My wife has made comments and hers are not included also. Tonight, you are going to approve minutes going back to February 10th, six meetings, February 10th, March 15th, April 20th, April 27th, May 11th, and May 18th. None of my written comments that were handed in and requested to be added to the official minutes are included. Even the April 27th minute states, see attachment A, but there is no attachment. The same minutes do show a neighbor's comments in their entirety. Why is this so difficult? What does this administration or board want to hide? Please explain to me why they are missing. Where is the transparency? At this meeting, you're going to approve a Memorandum of Understanding or MOU with the Wheatland Associates LP. The developer is planning to build an apartment complex of over 200 units on Wheatland Street. Last month, the board decided to go to executive session rather than discuss this in public meeting. The board stated that this was an agreement. I disagree. This is not a sale, a purchase of land, or a personnel matter, all issues to be discussed in executive session. There is a tax matter that affects all taxpayers of the school district and should have been discussed 
in public so the public would know how each board member thought of the proposal. When I read the MOU for this meeting, it states a three-year period for exemption. What is the exemption percentage for each year? A 100% tax deferment for three years or a graduated tax deferment as it, it currently is with other current learned deals in the district? The memorandum states see exhibit A. There is no exhibit A attached on the website. Please explain to the public exactly what this learned deal is so the public is aware of what the school district is approving. If a developer wants to come to Phoenixville, that developer should be paying real estate taxes just like all citizens and businesses are doing to support the district. Tonight's agenda includes under a personnel recommendation to appoint at a salary of $100,000, a curriculum supervisor effective June 29th, 2020. This is a new position. When I reviewed the minutes of April 27th, 2020, a director of curriculum was approved for an annual salary of $130, $130,000. It did not, it did note filling a current vacancy. The public should be aware that $230,000 is being paid out for curriculum overhead, which does not include benefits. When can the taxpayers of this school district finally see the forensic audit? Yes, the forensic audit note was received by the board on April 22nd, 2020, and we'll hear from the board that it's in the Phoenixville Department hands, but the results should be released now. That the board last week voted to reject us, but 30 seconds. 1.99, who is paying the 50,000 audit expense, us taxpayers or the administration? Who is responsible for lack of internal control? That concludes the first public comment. Second public comment is from Ms. Haley Durandetta. Tell her it's only a 25 minute drive. She doesn't even leave this early. Dave, you need to mute yourself. Peace up, Dave. <laughs> Good afternoon, PASD School Board. My Haley, that was not meant for you. He's not talking <laughs> to you, Haley. I apologize. No problem. Dear uh, PSD School Board, my stepson will be entering fourth grade at Manavon in the fall. I'm writing regarding the PASD entering fourth and fifth graders suggested summer reading list. In reviewing the list, I calculated that approximately 80% of the books are by white authors, approximately 8% of the books are by non-black authors of color, and approximately 6% of the books are by black authors. I understand that this breakdown is quite similar to the demographics of our community, However, it's startling to see how so few books by Black and non-Black authors are recommended. To me, the fact that the author demographics on the reading list coincide supposedly to the racial demographics of the community, the implication is that white students will read books by white authors, Black students will read books by Black authors, and so on. Just as it's important for Black and non-Black student children to read books by authors who look like them, it's important children read, to read books by authors who do not look like them. We can't possibly expect to work toward an anti-racist society if we keep teaching our white children that they are the center of every story. I contacted the principal last summer to express my disappointment that all of my, all the books on my stepson's suggested summer reading list were by white authors. In that sense, this year's list is an improvement. I just don't think incremental change is what we need right now. I know that these, these authors and books are just suggestions and we can take it upon ourselves to find diverse children's books for our kids but it would be great if the school district made more of an effort to send the right message. I suppose my question is how does the district plan to decenter whiteness going forward? Thank you for your time and consideration and for all that you do for our students. Ailey Durandetta. Our third public comment is from Ms. Lisa Longo. I know this is still a new board and the newly elected members may not have a clear understanding of board operations and protocol. I appreciate their service and hope that they will listen to what I have to say and know I am saying it out of respect and concern. There is no malice or ill intention. This is about policy. There is nothing personal in any of my comments. Yet once again, I am forced into this position of explaining proper board protocol and procedure. The discussion of an MIU for Alerta during an executive session is inappropriate and not allowed per Sunshine Law. The discussion of the MOU was absolutely deliberative and not in negotiation. The board was deliberating on the terms of Alerta that is not in negotiation that is allowed to take place in an executive session per Sunshine Law. This excuse that since it was only discussion 
of a memo and that somehow it allows this board to deliberate in secret is specious at best and deliberately misleading at worst. Make no mistake, you vi all violated Sunshine Law. There is no doubt. I checked. According to PA Department of Education, discussion of tax abatement is not allowed in executive session. This board is being misled into the darkness with bad advice and is operating in a manner that is unethical. Since the very first meeting, we have all witnessed the dysfunction and inept handling of issues, removal of officers, and replacing committee chairs all without public discussion. The obvious and utter failure to oversee the audit and lack, total lack of oversight of the administration or willingness by this board to hold them accountable for the apparent diversion of district funds, the deception regarding severe disproportionality investigation, as well as the overpayment to the municipality of hundreds of thousands of dollars, the failure of the audit to disclose the forensic audit, criminal investigation and embezzlement is stunning. I have seen some questionable board and elected officials, but this board is now a case study in what not to do. The misuse of executive sessions, quote unquote, points of order, the out of order nonsense and misinformation and disrespect by temporary staff the apparent policy of allowing them to make misstatements of fact and protocol, honestly, it has been appalling to watch. Any five members can come together, hold a public meeting, and call for an investigation and censure those responsible for the unethical and unprofessional operations of the past six months. Basic board governance and respect for taxpayers and other members is totally lacking. We have seen angry outbursts and contempt from one member and it is my understanding his behavior was so threatening, the police had to be called. Rather than being reprimanded, the behavior was ignored. The board has ignored both policy and protocol in removal of officers and committee chair, and in total disregard of years of board norms, the president put herself as chair of curriculum when this board has always operated with an agreement the president would not chair any committee. Were the new members even made aware of any of this history? We need this board to be given more history and background. We need this board to have some expert guidance. And it is with this in mind, I request that the Community Budget Advisory Committee be reinstated. Time, time is up. Thank you. Our fourth public comment for the evening. While you're taking a drink there, Dr. Whitehead, I just want to point out that there's a, a, a minutia, but it's not severe. The, the word severe for disproportionality keeps getting thrown around. It, the, the designation was significant, not severe. Yep. The last public comment for the first public comment session is from Leo Serini, Schuylkill Township. The topic is summer athletics, uh, group affiliation, the high school men's cross country team. Hello, members of the board. I hope that you are doing well. My name is Leo Serini, a soon-to-be junior at the high school and a captain of the men's cross of the men's cross-country team. Tonight's agenda indicates that there is a vote scheduled for the approval of the preliminary return to athletics, health, and safety plan for the 2020-21 school year. Since the plan, as of my writing this, has yet to be posted publicly, I am unaware of its specifics. However, if there are any provisions that would prevent an athletic team from leaving school grounds while practicing, I respectfully request that provision be removed, as it would cripple both the, of the Phoenixville cross country team's abilities to practice in any meaningful way over the summer. Additionally, the team will run in locations that range from the University of Valley Forge to the Schuylkill River Trail to the YMCA. As our runs, which can frequently range about above eight or nine miles, simply cannot be completed exclusively on district fields and properties. Completing even a relatively short four mile run on the track or around school property would lack dynamic geographic challenges that are innate to cross country. Along making every run, our team would be due mentally torturous due to the repetitive nature of our limited air. While minimizing contact with members of the community, to be in accordance with social distancing is important. It is important to note that due to the time our team starts its runs, 7.30 a.m., very few community members are out and about to be a threat to our health. A meaningful and effective summer training is critical for the team's success in the fall, and having access to the wider Phoenixville area to run is the first step in the success. Thank you for your consideration, Leo Serene. Madam President, that concludes the 
first public comment session. Great, thank you, Dr. Whitehead. Just wanted to follow up on a couple items and then Dr. Fagley, um, I'll allow you to do the same. Uh, the okay. audit, as we have mentioned multiple times, uh, is currently with the police and investigative authorities. We have not yet um, gotten the um, go ahead for the release from them. They had asked that we keep it confidential until they conclude their investigation. And so we are waiting for the conclusion of their investigation. Um, the second comment, I believe it was regarding diversity in education. Uh, that is absolutely something that we are striving towards in multiple areas, uh, including the reading lists, um, curriculum based changes, looking at, for example, last year, the social studies curriculum at the secondary level. Um, but I would like to actually um, toss this one back to either Dr. Fagley or Dr. Whitehead to speak a little bit more on some of those items. Uh, while we certainly have, while we have done things, we certainly have more room for growth as well. So I just wanted to acknowledge that piece and then also share some of the things that we're doing and that this work is ongoing. Uh, those were my points. So at this time, um, the curriculum, Dr. Fagley, anything in addition that you would like to add? Thank you. Sure. Um, I want to go back and also hit some of the other comments. You're right. Uh, President Emanuel, we have to keep doing better on our book and reading list, and we're going to keep doing that. We have started to make the changes. We'll make more. I would suggest folks go back. Uh, about a month ago, I did put out a list of 30 books by uh, Black authors, and it's an excellent uh, list of books. But yes, we're, that's something we need to keep looking at and doing and making sure that we have a balance of literature throughout. The MOU is a quick question. Uh, I'll have to go look and see why attachment A, uh, according to Mr. Morales, was not on there. Uh, apologies for that. The, it is a three-year alert. It is a 60% the first year, 30%, and then 15%, and then a zero. One of the key pieces is the past alertus did not go into effect until we had the appraisal in. The appraisal could take up to two years. This alert kicks in as soon as they get a certificate of occupancy for the uh, facility. That is a significant difference. So it takes what had been called a 10-year LERTA often ended up being 12 years down to three. Uh, and this board has been and will continue to make discussions in public about what the LERTA, the MOU is. And the LERTA really is not here yet because alert, it has to go back to the uh, borough for them to pass the LERTA. So this is just the MOU for us sitting there saying we would consider it as a board. So it's a consideration that's taking place. Uh, turn safety and security. On the athletic safety and security plans, they are getting ready to come out. What I would let the public know is the, these are the preliminary plans. The only thing I can assure you is that they actually change from Friday till today, and they will keep changing from this point forward as we keep getting more and more information. So uh, thank you very much, Leo. I don't recall whether it does say that you have to stay on grounds or not, but that's something we will look at. Uh, because cross country is one of those unique sports where you do need to have a little bit of extra room to get your good runs in. So we will be looking at that. I believe, oh, and with regards to comments uh, that had been said, why aren't the comments being put in full? We went back and we looked at advice from legal and advice from PSBA. Their advice is that we summarize all comments and that's what we have been doing and should continue to do. Uh, why there's a difference in one, I don't know. It really should be a summarized comment. So comments should be summarized that are coming in from the public. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. And, and actually on that uh, comments piece, uh, in addition to going with the advice of council, something that um, we've talked about previously is uh, the board getting together at some point when we're ideally not in a pandemic to discuss board communication and moving forward. So these will be ongoing discussions, but um, at this time we absolutely are going with the advice of council, state organizations, PSBA, you know, and pretty much everyone. I see two comments here. We will keep them brief, Dr. Serini. Yes, um, Dr. Fegley, could you just show us where exactly members of the public can access the documents that are under new business items? I know you and I have been back and forth and I'm having a very challenging time locating it myself, uh, the, the, two, the pandemic plan and as well as the athletic plan. That way maybe um, some of our constituents can take a look uh, while we're going through some of the other items. Thank you. Thank you. We can put those up on, we can make sure that that's done. Uh, Dr. Um, 
Ms. Broker. You're muted, Mrs. Broker. Yeah, no, it's, um, with regard to the minutes, um, my understanding was that we were gonna actually like have a discussion about that um, because I've got, I've got a letter into the, um, I've got a letter into the, uh, the um, Office of Open Records, um, which I've not heard back yet, but um, just to make sure that we are being compliant with the state law, um, it's really this is something that is governed by state law and also local, uh, local government law. Um, right, Ms. Broker, and that's why we had conferred with council and we've also taken guidance from the state organizations. Yes, we are going to be having a discussion about that. We have talked about it and we will do that you at a later date. Thank you. Finish. Thank you. Um, we had talked about talking about this at the end of June. There was never a vote. I asked Dave to put it on to policy because we do have a running policy as stated by Eric in writing um, uh, to include public um, to include public, he in fact welcomed and invited public comment um, to be included as a, almost as a way of to expedite meetings by putting putting them in writing. Um, and so this would be a change of policy and practice, and that's why I'd ask. Not in okay, Ms. Broker. I, I apologize for interrupting you, but this is how the minutes have looked for a while. We will be discussing that this as a board. However, this is not the time. I think that it is definitely the time and nobody ever said we would do this retroactively. Um, no, no, and nor did I just now. Ms. Broker, uh, going through our agenda, if this was a concern you wanted to bring up, all of, our, all of the board members were asked that if an item on the consent agenda was suggested to be pulled that they email ahead of time. This was not I'm talking about the consent just agenda. ahead of time. I'm talking about your response to, 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 to a particular question that I think was not it, it, we, I understand you disagree with my response. That is noted. At this time, we are moving on with our agenda. On a policy matter. Broker, we are moving on with our agenda. We will have this discussion later. If ethics, then I will follow that advice. Thank you. This time, Mr. Goldberg, would you please uh, provide your policy um, report from this? Yes, thank you. Um, let's start with uh, start at the start uh, regarding uh, uh, policy two two two. Uh, this was we, we have two tonight that have to do with uh, tobacco use. They're essentially very, uh, I guess you could almost call them relatively verbatim, if that's such a thing. Uh, the first one two 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 was regarding. Uh, Tobacco, smoking, uh, nicotine derivatives uh, regarding pupils, and then the and then the following one is, is more uh, is more for uh, well is for employees. Uh, to begin with, uh, we essentially uh, in the beginning just did a little bit of uh, minor housekeeping uh, with uh, how the wording of the purpose was. We also changed uh, uh, vapor uh, to nicotine derivative. That way, we can uh, uh, have this. Um, cover lots of different uh, delivery or derivative or devices and stuff like that. Um, we also included uh, state law, specifically state how state law defines tobacco products, et cetera. Uh, and we went uh, very specifically into what tobacco can, what tobacco is, what it is not. And again, we broaden it to uh, include nicotine delivery to make it a little more, um, uh, to, to make sure that we were covering everything. Um, and, uh, Overall devices, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that was for uh, 222. The um, next one, you have to give me a second. I'm clicking manually through. Uh, 323 was also essentially the uh, same thing. Uh, we made the same changes uh, in uh, uh, definitions, et cetera, uh, that I just spoke about, spoke about a second ago, only essentially with employees. Um, so I'm not going to get any, any much more specific, uh, specificity than that, just because I think I went over it, uh, a few minutes ago with, the uh, the first tobacco. Uh, third is 805.2 regarding school security personnel. Uh, this one, we had uh, quite a few changes to, um, well, uh, actually Dr. Frankly, was this a PNN? I don't recall. This is a PNN and we did have a couple of changes that, um, were added in. 
Yeah, um, I think there was a uh, basically uh, the purpose uh, of this one was to make sure that we were organized. Uh, our security was organized uh, both with you know with everyone in the building, students, staff, visitors, etc., as well as the facilities. We made some uh, definitions of what uh, the different types of security uh, personnel. Uh, we also indicated uh, who reports to whom. Again, I don't want to get into the, the minutia about it, but uh, essentially. Uh, who reports to who, who responds, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, again, definitions of different types of uh, support people. Um, and the, I'm loading up the last one right now. So just uh, give me some indulgence here, please. Lastly, uh, we uh, 810.1, we uh, had a actually relatively extensive discussion uh, regarding uh, drivers uh, or basically transportation personnel and uh, the drug and alcohol testing of them. Um, who's covered, who's not covered, uh, covered. Cleaned up some of the language in the, uh, in the purpose uh, at the beginning uh, to make it a little bit more, um, uh, to make it uh, mirror some of the other stuff we have in other policies. Specifically, in, uh, talked about who was a covered driver and went into procedures. Uh, there, uh, uh, as, uh, I thought that I had caught a mistake uh, before we come on. Uh, became a, before we came on here a typo, but as I'm reading it, actually, it was not it was not a typo. I was making. Um, we added some language regarding uh, the FM uh, the FMCSA, uh, which is a federal regulation uh, regarding the transportation of, and um, we added uh, we added uh, some language about uh, annual requirements as well, and that were. If I'm looking correctly, that was oh yeah, the only ones that well, we took. Thank you. Mr. Weiss, do you have a comment question? Yes, I just wanted to double check with uh, Mr. Goldberg on 222. Did we um, change vape vapor delivery to nicotine delivery in the title also? Or I know we did it in the body as you described. I was just curious if we had made that change in the title. Let me take a look, because uh, I do not recall. Um, I'm just thinking of consistency. Thank you. No, I agree. Uh, unfortunately, it, with uh, someone sharing the screen, it's kind of it's not very log uh, logistically. It's hard to uh, get back over to my uh, policy. Dr. Fagley, would you please click on the- um... It does say vapor delivery versus nicotine. So we can change that to nicotine delivery on 222. Could you open that up for me, Dr. Fegley? I think so. I'm logging in an email trying to open it up again because I uh, didn't expect the question. Um, smoking tobacco, nicotine, derivative delivery. Yes. So we did get it right on this one. We just didn't get it right on the agenda. We'll, we'll okay. check. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Goldberg. Okay, this time we will move to board representative reports. And first up is myself with the Legislative Council. Uh, what I'd like to start out by saying is that everything that I'm about to say, we do already have online on the PASD website under school board. There's a tab that says legislative updates. So if you hear something and don't remember the number or I speak too quickly because I do that, you know, it is, it is online and easily accessible so you can get a written copy. So in the ever evolving world, um, especially given COVID, a lot of these are um, updates relating to finance and COVID and regulation. So HR 836 um, was an effort to terminate the um, proclamation of disaster emergency by the governor. The concern regarding that is then it would affect the funding that we would receive from the CARES Act. Mm -hmm. So there is significant current concern regarding that. Um, safeties and securities grants. These are grants that we have been receiving for the last two years relating to specifically safety. However, for this year, thankfully, they are also going to allow for certain COVID related expenses. So looking at PPE, cleaning supplies and mental health services. So it's, it's great that we can use, if we so choose the monies, some of the monies towards those services. Senate bill 1125 um, provides the opportunity for school districts to discount their periods and remove penalties through June 30th, 2021. 
it re requires the school district pass a resolution regarding specific dates of penalty fees. That one has not passed yet. So therefore we cannot go to that extension. House Bill 364 um, amends, oh, this is one that I've actually been following for a little while now, and it might sound silly, but it is actually very important for some of our students who receive transportation on smaller vehicles. So these are often our students who uh, receive special education services, who may have a van or a special vehicle to take them to their placement. Those vehicles under PA code were not allowed to have uh, flashing lights on them. So they weren't always easily identifiable to the general public. And we've all seen this where um, somebody might go around the vehicle. You know, there's a lot of challenges with that. However, um, this bill, which did pass the House, but still needs to get through the Senate, um, this bill would allow for those vehicles to have flashing lights and the stop sign that comes out. Um, HB 2387, flat funds uh, education budget for the 2021 year. We talked about that at the last budget meeting. HB 1083 um, transfers 300 million in federal funding from the CARES Act to the State Tax Relief Fund to restore um, the homestead exemptions that were lost from gaming revenues that were lost during COVID. So we have uh, several things that came out of the omnibus. Um, Plan Com Moratorium, still here. Um, and the number of school days, it is still 180. So there was a push to have less and it didn't happen. HB 1210 um, allows the schools to use those safety grants, um, safety and security grants towards COVID items. H Bill 1076, um, still in the house, still in committee, senior volunteer and property tax rebate. Um, the bill would allow school districts to establish programs benefiting taxpayers 60 years or older who provide a volunteer service. This is something we've been talking about. We're bringing it back to policy. It's something that the House is also talking about. And then finally, second to last, HB 2460, tax penalties, um, uh, amended and approved unanimously by the Finance Committee. The bill extends the deadlines for the property taxes, but it still hasn't made it out of the House. So, um, and then final item is Speaker Terzai did resign on the 15th. So looking um, at a change in leadership, and that is still TBD from the last I heard. And um, that is it for my legislative update. Again, it is online. I know I went through it rather quickly. Does anybody have any questions? Seeing none at this time, Mr. Weiss with PCEF. Thank you, Madam President. Um, from PCEF, uh, they were at, at the senior event award, at the senior awards event, pardon me. And PCEF presented 18 scholarships totaling $27,300 uh, on behalf of PCEF and, and other donors. Also, donations are still coming in to Together, the Together We Can Fund, which is supplying food and helping uh, in technology. So far, we've raised or they've raised over $80,000, which is phenomenal. Um, PCEF will have an internship this year, uh, either for a junior or a senior, dealing with publicity and social media. So if we get back to brick and mortar, um, and if we're able to do this, it would maybe be a wonderful opportunity for, for a student. Um, so, and the last item I, I have is that uh, the school district and PCEF are having discussions about uh, potentially um, having fundraising for the benefit of technology, which we discussed a fair amount at, at workshop. And this may, uh, would be something that would be helpful towards that end. Um, and that is what I have from PCEF. Are there any questions? Any additions from Dr. Fagley? Sometimes uh, you have some additional insights. See, for the PCEF, I don't have any. Okay. I do have something from the Health Foundation. Okay. <laughs> Foundation. Thank you. I don't. I see no hands for PCEF. So, um, yeah, Dr. Fagley, would you like to jump in with your HF update? Sure. I'm pleased to announce that on Friday, 
uh, and which I didn't read until Sunday, I think, we learned that uh, the Health Foundation is willing to donate $15,000 to the Phoenix Area School District to help feed the parents of the children, the adults. So we are in the process now of going to, we're going to start adding adult food to our um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, distribution. So that's a really wonderful donation coming in from the Health Foundation. And we thank them greatly for helping the entire community on that. Absolutely. And we appreciate, we do very much appreciate it. And we will communicate out the email and social media when those, when that program gets up and running. Thank you very much. And then on to Ms. Reed and the Valley Forge Aquatic Center Board. You're still muted, Ms. Reed. I, I understand. I finally figured it out. Thank you. Um, Yes, I have nothing to report. Today, um, there was a meeting. It was around the storm, so I didn't get the invitation. Um, but remember to like on Facebook, Valley Forge Aquatic Center, V-F-A-C. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Seamus and the uh, CCIU. Uh, I think the most exciting thing is that the Ready to Drive CCIU driver testing facility is open for business. Um, <laughs> kids can schedule, they have to wear a mask, have protocols. And the two locations are the TCHS Pen Pennox Bridge Campus in West Grove and the Chester County Intermediate Unit in Downingtown. And I will give the post to, um, to Sandy so she could put it up there for everybody to know. And that is what I have. Thank you. Thank you. I neglected to ask for comments on the Valley Forge Aquatic Center. So let's just say if there are any comments or questions on either of those two items, please put your hand up. I can give one addition that we're starting to explore with the aquatics group and that are swim lessons. So they're, they think they may have a uh, funder who would help fund some swim lessons for our younger students this coming school year. Still a lot of work to take place with that but that's something that we are um, starting to explore. Thank you. Ms. Broker? Yeah, um, I just had a question if, um, I'm sorry if this was already answered, but um, do, do we know where they are as far as their fundraising goes? I do know where they are as far as their fundraising goes and right now it is um, minimal. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, we will now at this time move on to the consent agenda portion. We did pull items B and C5. They will be pulled to and pushed off to a future meeting. And um, so at this time, I move for a motion to approve the consent agenda. Mr. Weiss has asked to abstain from item A3. So at this time, do I have a motion? That move. Second. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Are, are we voting opposed for the consent agenda or the motion? The consent agenda. I would like to break out um, some of my responses, if I may. You were asked to do that prior to the meeting so that I could make the announcement the way that Mr. Weiss has done. I thought you meant for items that you wanted pulled from the agenda, not our actual vote. And I'm requesting to remove, um, to vote separately on item one. I'm, I'm sorry, we're in the middle of a vote. We actually completed the vote. We had eight ayes, if I'm not mistaken. Nay, thank you. I did not get two abstentions. That will include Mr. Weiss on A3. Are there any abstentions? Yeah. Hearing none, motion passes. Before we move on, I do have a retirement resolution to read. Whereas Mr. Henry Coyne has served 36 years in education in Phoenixville, and Mrs. Nikki Palladino has served 14 years in education in Phoenixville as teachers and dedicated members of professional staff, and Mrs. Linda 
Vitaly has served 10 and a half years in education in Phoenixville as a dedicated member of the support staff of the Phoenixville Area School District, whereas Mr. Hoyne, Mrs. Palladino, and Mrs. Vitaly have tendered their resignations from the district for the purpose of retirement, whereas the Board of School Directors of Phoenixville Area School District wishes to recognize them for their valued service and officially record its appreciation, here, be it hereby resolved that the School Board of Directors of Phoenixville Area School District observes with regret the resignations of Mr. Coyne, Mrs. Palladino, and Mrs. Val Vitali, apologies, from its staff and expresses deep appreciation for their service and dedication. And be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be recorded into the minutes of the meeting of the School Board of Directors of Phoenix Valeria School District held on June 22nd, and that a copy of this resolution be presented to Mr. Coyne, Mrs. Palladino, and Mrs. Vitali. Thank you so much for your service. This is a lot of years when you add them all up. Mm -hmm. Now we will move on to voting items not on the consent agenda. We did pull the MOU for um, the Western Project. So at this time, is there a motion to approve the MOU? A move. A second. Okay. Discussion. Ms. Broker, your hands up. That was that was from before. That was from okay. Before. Got it, uh, Ms. Soto. <laughs> I just want to just reiterate my concerns on this um, MOU. I mean, I know that it's not an actual LERTA. I, I know they'd have to come back to us for us um, back to us in order to do a LERTA. But um, I just you know our tax base is really strapped, and I just don't feel comfortable putting anything that may affect um, our constituents in some shape or form. So that's it. I just wanted to share my thoughts on it. Thank you, Dr. Srini. Thank you, Madam President. I just more or less have a comment with regard to the uh, arrangement. When we first received uh, interest from the developer, their terms were look completely different than where we are now. I, I do feel very good about our dialogue back and forth, several volleys, several volleys. And I believe that with the potential uncertainty of COVID that a, a lot of uh, investors, developers are pulling back on initiatives that they were going to work on. And so uh, it, it's obviously not an easy decision. I do feel very good about the dialogue that we've had back and forth. I personally, along with another board member, went and looked at another project in the area and was very pleased with uh, its appearance. And uh, I believe that the, the terms that we're settling on are favorable, especially under the uh, uncertain times. I do um, just want to clarify that in this past week that we've had that we have heard and uh, responded to any inquiries from any of our uh, stakeholders who might have concerns um, about just access to information or questions. So, was, you know, just I guess that's a general question for an, um, just the district in terms of have we been able to reach everyone and address any, are there any outstanding concerns? Thank you. Any emails that the board have, has received regarding this issue, issue have, have been answered? Ms. Reed? No, thank you. I changed. Ms. Broker, did the hand go back up? Yes, it did go back up. Um, yeah, uh, I just wanted to kind of echo what, um, what Ms. Soto said. Um, I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm in accord with what she's saying. I think Phoenixville is still hot. I see, you know, things selling very quickly. Um, and uh, I, I, I agree that uh, we, we need as much tax revenue as we can. So I'm hoping that we can kind of um, consider that. Ms. Reed? I was going to ask Mrs. Soto if she knew if um, the project has commenced. Ms. Soto? Whether they broke ground on this project? Right, or if anyone knows, but I thought you might know. 
that I don't know um, on it at all. Actually, I don't have information on that. Um, my understanding was, was they were going to start in June. So I don't know if they actually broke ground yet. Okay, thank you. Vaguely, we don't have any update of that nature, do we? No, we don't. I don't believe they have, but I don't know for certain. Thank you. Dr. Serini. Just another thought. Um, I know there was some question about the terms and what was discussed in executive session and not. Can you just clarify where we stand with that? And um, is there an opportunity for public comment before we vote on that, just to make sure that subsequent to our discussion that any stakeholders have an opportunity to comment? So the terms were disclosed at the last meeting. In addition, um, when the public comment came in this evening, Dr. Fag Dr. Fagley reiterated those terms and the public has had the opportunity to email us all week since we discussed openly last week at the workshop meeting, which was public, this issue. You're muted. I know the terms were disclosed. The question, I would like clarification as to the what we discussed in executive session was appropriate for sun, uh, not a violation of sunshine. I, I want clarification on that because I'm still not clear on. Everything that was discussed in executive session was released when we discussed things openly at the meeting last week. Therefore, it negates the concerns of Sunshine since there was nothing withheld from the public. So just, um, I'll, I guess my comment is for our, since our council's not present here at the meeting, could we have maybe either Mr. Goldberg or Ms. Broker, our attorney? They are not our council and they do not I, represent I us. I will I'm push back them, on that. I'm, I'm asking them to discuss if their mm -hmm. opinions on that and anyone else who might have an opinion on um, this, that. This is not germane to the conversation of the vote we are trying to take. It's directly related this matter to matter at length. We are now discussing the vote. If you have additional comments you would like to share that are based on the vote that we are taking right now, please do so. Otherwise, we are moving on. Let me just clarify. We're voting on the MOU, correct? Correct. And we're discussing it, correct? Okay. My question relates to, and I want clarification for our stakeholders that we are in compliance with the Sunshine Laws. That's all I'm asking. That relates and that to I answer by publicly, I hear you, Dr. Serini, but by publicly having the entirety of the conversation in public view, we have done our due diligence in disclosure to the public. Your question was answered, Doc, uh, Ms. Broker. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, I was going to say. I mean, if if you if someone feels uncomfortable about that, um, you know, they can always abstain. I think. Thank you, Ms. Soto. Um, I do want to just make clear to our public that you know, if this goes through, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that there will be a LERTA in place. Actually, it doesn't mean that there will be a LERTA in place. It just means that if a LERTA was to come to us, that would be the terms. So I just want to make that clear to people. I mean, they would still have to go to um, the, the county, they have to go to the borough, come back to us. And then that is the point where we can decide whether or not we want an actual LERTA. So I do want to give, you know, that for the people who had concerns, I want to at least give them that information. And I know we've said it in the past, but I just want to reiterate it in case people had concerns about, about that. And just one clarification on that point. Um, any, there's always the chance that the alerta that comes back to us might not reflect this MOU. This is, you know, this is the proposal that we are putting together that we, if it passes, would be comfortable with considering a potential alerta that has these parameters, but in negotiations with the borough or the county, there could be different parameters suggested. And what we might see in the future is unknown. This is just potential parameters for consideration in the future. Ms. Broke. You're muted. Yeah, that was my question was, um, this is, um, it, this is not a binding. I mean, the circumstances change and, you know, it takes a long time for these things to, to, to go through that process. 
And so I just wanted to clarify that um, this can be um, this can be a modified. Um, it's not a it's not, it's not our final word. Um, depending on you know certainly how things look, the forecast and the outlook and the various other projects going on um, at the it's time that it is ripe for us to weigh in again. Correct. Thank you. Yes, uh, Mr. Goldberg. I'm not saying this as an attorney. I'm saying this as a board member, and I'm not, certainly not saying this out of any obligation. I'm saying this uh, out of my just my own uh, volition and what I've what I've observed. I'm completely comfortable that everything we've done regarding this potential MOU has been uh, entirely in the sunshine. Ms. Soto, one last. Um, I just had a quick question. Um, if this was to come back to us um, for a possibility of alerta. Um, in that scenario, do we have to, we, would we hold a public hearing on it before any type of vote on this? Yes. Okay. I just wanted that for clarification. Thank you. I okay, seeing no other hands. My two quick thoughts. Um, first, um, I actually do want to preface by saying, Dr. Whitehead, I'm going to ask for a roll call on this one because I do think we're going to have um, a split vote. Don't know which way it's going to go, but I think that we'll have enough folks on different sides. Um, and then second is, um, I will be a no vote. I have significant concerns. We did, you know, we're asking a lot of our taxpayers. We did um, approve an increase last week at budget. And I, I struggle with giving a business the waiver that we couldn't afford to give to our taxpayers, our residential taxpayers. Um, so I do, my vote will be no, because I do have concerns. We are in a challenging time. Um, and Phoenix is still really hot. So at this time, Dr. Whitehead, would you please do a roll call vote? Seeing no further comments. Very good. I'll now call the roll for the MOU with CSW. Ms. Brooker. You're muted, Lori. God. Okay. No. Mr. Katz, Jerome. Yes. Ms. Emanuel. No. Mr. Goldberg. No. Ms. Reed. No. Ms. Seamus. No. Dr. Serini. Abstain. Mrs. Soto. No. Mr. Weiss. No. Motion passed. Thank you. Um, at this time, we will open for public comment on new business items. Our new business item is the pandemic plan for reopening schools and our approval to appoint Willis Tower Watson as our insurance broker. Whitehead, um, do we have any additional public comments that have come in? And this would be for new business. For new business. Uh, we have one public comment regarding the Wheatland project, and then one general public comment. Nothing for new business. And those two comments can be read for the all business items public comment section. Correct. Meeting. Thank you. Dr. Serene, is your hand still up or is that? An Thank you. Yeah, I just, I know that the pandemic team worked very hard last week and I, I'm grateful for that. And I know that this is going to be a dynamic process. There, there'll be multiple iterations. I just want cl clarification on where exactly this information is on the website so that folks can find it. I know there's been some challenges trying to get it. And um, just ask everyone for the patience because I know the team is, uh, the pandemic team is working very hard. And, um, oh, you know, we're getting a lot of information uh, from multiple sources that's kind of uh, in progress. So I, I, I personally just, it's more of a comment, uh, I'm braced for the, uh, you know, uncertainty and ambiguity of, of a lot of it and then anticipated changes. But if we could maybe even put it somewhere prominent on the site so that folks can, 
easily find it because I know multiple times I've looked for it today and I just, I, I, I'm not able to. So thank you. And thank you everyone for your hard work. It wouldn't be posted on the website because we haven't voted on it yet. Once it is, it will be under the COVID section of the website, which is very clearly placed. And so, it is right now part of the complete but packet, complete packet that is out there. So if you go out and you go to board agendas and you pick click board workshop complete, it is on in that packet where everything, all all the attachments are. No, I I have it. I know where to find it. What I'm saying is, is, is so is it not available to the public then? No, it's fully available to the public. It is so on with, the public website. Okay. I'm confused because President uh, so let's Let's take this. Well, I was speaking to what we would do once the vote has passed. If it passes, I don't want to presume here. It would be in a very prominent place on the website. However, as is with any of our agendas in any of our meetings, the agenda is placed on the website, available for the public, and there are links attached where they can access the documents. We will make sure at the conclusion of this meeting, should this pass, that we will place it in addition to that in the prominent placement on the website. So, but, but what I'm saying is, is that I had asked earlier today in an email, that's exactly what I asked. Are we disseminating this information? And so yes, we are, is the answer to your question. Oh. Okay. It is, it After is, we is. vote on it is what you're saying. No, I, no. I said, we'll move it out to the website in a prominent location on the front page of the website. There is a COVID tab. We will move it out there once it is voted on. Until it is voted on, it is in the agenda which is also on the website. I'm looking at the agenda for today. Okay. The one that can Dr. I just, Begley, um, can I just, no, excuse I, me, if I could just finish because I'm trying to make I know, a Dr. Serini, I have your answer. I have Okay, answer. thank you. If you go under to the PASD where it says um, 2020 board meeting agendas, if you go to 6 yeah. board meeting and workshop complete mm -hmm. and you go to the very end, that is where the plan is located. But right. let me ask you a question. Why not put it on the agenda for this evening so that people can easily because find it? I don't understand we have it that. It's as a packet. It's as a packet. It's in the packet. But how are how are students and long. coaches and the members of the community and parents how, how are they supposed to find it? I can't Dr. even. Dr. Serini, find it. Dr. Serini, the packet yes. is 350 pages long. In that packet, it includes everything that we're discussing. Can all the backup put, for everything on there, including I understand the that. But the I have your request, Dr. Srini, Dr. Srini, if I may, your request, that, if I may, your request yes. that in the future, instead of having it keep, keep the complete packet with the workshop, which we have done, you want us to put the complete packet with the board agenda. I'm asking for the items that are new business for tonight. So people who are looking at the agenda tonight for 622, it's a new agenda item. They don't know to go to the workshop. If that's the way you want to do it, that's fine. But then let's put a footnote it directs Fair people enough. to the work a link. That's all. It's confusing. I have, no, you Dr. know, Sweeney students. Says, excuse Dr. me. Dr. It says board meeting and workshop complete. It's both of them. It says it on there. I'm looking at it right now. It says board meeting and workshop. It's the backup for everything. Yeah. When a member of the community, I've had students looking at trying to get this information today. Okay. It, when they go to the agenda for tonight, it's a new business item that they have to provide comment on. They don't know to go to the workshop from 615. We have all different people with different backgrounds, with different, I, why not make it simple for our people to find this information? How are they supposed to comment if they don't know where to find it? And then I'm sending multiple emails and they're not getting answered. Very frustrating, thank you. Noted, Ms. Broker. Wait, let me let me keep two hands are up. Let me keep the hands up, please, Ms. Broker. Oh yeah, I would just agree. Maybe that that we could at some point down the road talk about um, just accessing information. I just as a parent, it it does get a little bit tricky sometimes. And I've seen some other examples of other districts where it really is just like a one button kind of thing for something that's you know, you know, that's very salient and important for for um, parents and and kids. Um, something worth considering, I think, to be more user-friendly. Noted. Okay, at this time, um, I will turn it over to Dr. Fagley and Dr. Whitehead. I'm not sure who's taking lead on the pandemic plan and sharing with folks our um, pandemic plan and plans moving forward. 
I'll give a quick introduction and then I'll turn it over to Dr. Whitehead. <clears throat> As has already been noted, this pandemic plan and athletic plan, so there's two separate plans, are required by the state, uh, must be voted on by the board. The pandemic plan in the end will be submitted to the state. The athletic plan will re stay, just stay here in-house, shall we say, both on the district website. In order for us to start summer school, extend the school year on July 1, we must have at least the preliminary plan approved by you as the board. The only thing I can tell you is that your approval tonight will be coming back to you again in July, will be coming back to you again in August, will come back to you in September and October, continually changing and revising this plan based on the new information that we receive. Uh, how sure am I of that? Well, we received information today that is going to make some additional changes to the plan. And that comes coming in from Chester County um, Department of Health. That said, everyone is also saying, keep moving forward with your plans because you need to get something in place and start doing your planning. So with that as an introduction, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Whitehead who can describe the process that has been used. And I wanna do my initial thanks to the administrative team and the pandemic team for their hard work on trying to get this pulled together as quickly as they have. Dr. Whitehead? Thank you, Dr. Fagley. Um, just uh, again, it's, it's a very long and lengthy document, um, but I just wanted to also, uh, again, reemphasize uh, gratitude to, the, uh, to both the admin team uh, and the pandemic team. In terms of process, uh, the pandemic team initially met, um, and as you can see from the pandemic team, uh, we have a really good a good group. There are some medical professionals who are also happen to be parents in the school district as well. Um, in particular, I want to give a, a lot of thanks to uh, Raphael Hennen. He and I have been working with each other. He's uh, the emergency coordinator for the hospital. So he and I joke that we have similar jobs at the moment. <laughs> uh, his is a little more complex, obviously, than mine. Um, but uh, we, it's really been a really good working relationship. So the parent, the team initially met. Uh, and really kind of brainstormed uh, a lot of the areas. And again, just to remind the board, uh, in terms of the, the plan and of itself, uh, the components are cleaning, sanitizing, policies and procedures, um, monitoring student and staff health, uh, social distancing and other safety protocols, and then lastly, other considerations as well. Encompassed within all of those areas are, are specifics to the instructional plan. That's a very involved and detailed plan. There's also some, some uh, items that are specific to the administration that are not, not necessarily health and safety in terms of the instructional piece. Uh, and then lastly, there's uh, the medical component uh, to all of this and monitoring student staff health, transportation, social distancing, equipment that would need to be purchased, physical hardware, some physical plant building changes that might need to occur. So all of those are, are contained within the plan. Uh, then the administration team, uh, as Dr. Fagley mentioned, met for three days, three solid days of really hard work to iron out all of the details with regards to the specifics. Then the plan went back again to the pandemic team uh, for another review. They tweaked that plan again. Uh, we have some parents on that team as well. So they were looking at it from the parent lens as well. Uh, and also lastly, I just wanna point out that the pandemic teams, there are certain pandemic team members that in the future will serve a dual role. There's persons on the planning team that are, that are, their sole responsibility is just the planning of the document. And then there are those that will, be, will serve on the response team uh, should, should we have some sort of crisis that will occur uh, pertaining to COVID-19. So it was a very lengthy process in a very short amount of time. We covered a lot of different areas. Uh, as Dr. Fagley mentioned today, uh, there were some, some, for example, some uh, guidance that we received regarding personal protective equipment for school nurses that we received from the Chester County Board of Health that was added into the plan. Uh, there were some other social distancing suggestions uh, from the Chester County Board of Health and that was added into the plan today at 10 o'clock this morning. So it's going to be a continued uh, evolving document, uh, but we really seek the board's approval uh, tonight so that we can move forward because there's a lot of work to be done uh, this summer that the admin team has to do uh, that pertains to the plan. And I'll answer any questions at this time. One thing for the board also to know is that after you approve this plan tonight, we will then take it 
we will put it all in one color in the sense of all the text in one color, but any changes made from this point forward will be in red so that the board will be able to quickly identify what the changes are that have taken place. And then we will um, bring it back to the board for approval. Once that approval takes place, we'll li label that draft 14 or wherever it is. And then we'll start with red again, we'll clean it all up and move it to, you know, for draft 15, it will be in red. So you'll always be able to note what the changes are from plan to plan as we go through. That will also take place with the athletic plan. Thank you. Dr. Serini? I believe Ms. Soto um, had her, or somebody had, maybe she it was did, but she lowered her hand, so oh, okay. you're up. Okay, so uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Fegley, just to clarify, so we file with the state the, the plan that we're looking at right now. The additional plan for the um, athletics is that does not get filed, and therefore it's at the district and more nimble to feedback from your coaches and your, because we have band, which is actually also considered a, an athletic, correct? So there's there's going to be a lot of people who, for anybody who might be listening, who might be panicking, or, um, you know, we will, it will be on file with the district. So it'll be a, a nimble, fluid document that will uh, be able to be uh, adjusted accordingly to any feedback that's received. Just wanted to clarify that. It will remain, you're correct, it remains Thank here. You. Okay. Thank but you. But I think one quick clarification though, it's receiving feedback doesn't necessarily mean a change. It would still have to go through the process. We'd still have to make sure we're in compliance with whatever phase yep. of whatever color scheme we're in at that moment. Um, so I just, just wanted to clarify that point. We're not just changing it because of a singular request. It would have to go through the process. And one, not to be late, but one, one other additional point. The continuity of education plan that we had from, from March on, that was also resubmitted three times we made changes. So we are allowed to make changes and resubmit. Yeah. Yeah, no, I just want anybody who might be um, feeling like we put it together quickly and with not being, you know, just, you know, disconnected from just talking because of COVID uh, restrictions. I just want people to understand that there'll be opportunities for feedback. And then, of course, thank you for clarifying the, um, it needs to be within the, the parameters that we're given. But yeah, that absolutely, um, that if there are, uh, changes or improvements or just things that are working or not working that there will be an opportunity for conversation and, and then a, a, a course uh, adjustment if, if appropriate. Thank you. Mr. Weiss. Oh, I just had a suggestion uh, as it relates to keeping track of which version someone may be looking at. Um, in since I see this as a Word document, Within Word on the footnote templates, you can put a date and you can put a rev level on the document. And that might aid in understanding which version someone may be looking at. And it's it's an automatic thing. You just say, do it. You know, you set it as rev A or, or the, the data picks up automatically. And that may aid also in making sure that someone can see it quickly that uh, I got last week's version. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, we also have new business item two, which is the approval to appoint Willis Tower Watson as the insurance broker of record through June 21. We, I see a handout from Ms. Soto. Sorry, I didn't realize we were gonna go to the third item. I had a question about the second item. Um, on the second item, there was one thing that stood out to me that I had a little bit of concern, and I'm sure there's a there's an answer for it. But um, on there, it mentions um, about um, children bringing their own water, which is understandable. Um, but it said something about not being able to go into the building to get water. Is there going to be some type of water available for them outside the building then, in case they need to refill? Yes. Okay, because it was it didn't say like it, there wasn't really any clarity in that, so I just um, wanted to just point that out. No, uh, what it is is we don't want students just going to the building. So we, ha we will have to have a place where they can fill without contaminating each other. Yeah, I figured that's what it was, but I just wanted to just to, um, just to, I don't know if there's a way to note it or something on there. Yeah, we'll, we'll go back and look at the wording. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay. So any other comments on either the insurance, the um, athletic and activities or pandemic? Ms. Soda, your hands up, but I think it's from before. I just want to clarify. There it goes. <laughs> okay, so seeing none at this point, um, looking for a motion, we'll do them one at a time. Motion to approve the preliminary pandemic reopening plan for 2021. Do I have a motion? I move. Second. Second, Michelle. And Mr. Goldberg got, uh, Mr. Dr. Whitehead, Mr. Goldberg was the motion. Yep. All those in um, technically discussion. Being none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Next item is the athletic and activities plan. Do we have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. 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 Um, discussion? Ms. Soto, your hand is back up. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure, did we get any public comments regarding new business before we continue um, and, and um, with these motions? The public comments all do not pertain to new business or general public. Okay, I just want to make sure the public had a chance to comment if they had to comment. All right, thank you. Okay, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Final new business item for tonight is the approval to appoint Willis Tower Watson as the insurance broker of record through June 2021. Is there a motion? I'll move. Second. 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 Ms. Reed was your second. Uh, discussion. If I may, Madam President, uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Fazio for working really, really hard on this uh, negotiations. He went out for a bid and he's come in with something that is approximately seventy to $80,000 less for the same level of insurance or better. Uh, we apologize that it took so long, but you know, tough negotiations sometimes take a long time. But I'd like to thank Mr. Fazio for what I'll call his final gift to the district, <laughs> uh, some additional savings. Absolutely appreciate and agreed. Right, yeah. Seeing... Thank you. Thank you, Rich. We, uh, I appreciate it both, both as a board member and a taxpayer. I think a lot yes. of people forget that when we vote on taxes and stuff, we pay them too. Um, so we, uh, we really appreciate that this is kind of like your uh, closing salvo, if you will. Um, yeah. Very, very good job. Thanks a lot. And then I wanted to point out, I know that um, Dr. Fagley said a number but it was it was almost one third, wasn't it, that we saved one third of the premium? Approximately, yes. Yes, it's a little less than one third. I don't want to, but it was it was a lot of savings, and in, in relation to the insurance. So thank you. Excellent point. Okay, seeing no further comments at this time, all those in favor of approving the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstentions. Motion carries. So with this, I'll turn it over to Dr. Whitehead, who will read the public comments that have come in. Dr. Whitehead. Okay, thank you, Madam President. We have three public comments <clears throat> for the second public comment section. First is from Ms. Lisa Longo. My comment was timed for exactly three minutes. The fact that someone else is reading it and therefore did not read it in its entirety is wrong and another instance of this board not operating with respect for public comment. Here is the end of the first comment. We need this board to be given more history and background. We need this board to have some expert guidance. And it is with this in mind, I request the Community Budget Advisory Committee be reinstituted. We need to invite back prior members to help during this time of crisis. We need people with professional finance backgrounds who understand board governance and who have proven track record. Please be started to see back immediately and charge them with oversight of the budget, finances, and audit with the finance committee and public meetings. Thank you. And I ask the board members consider a motion to call the vote for this evening. 
and it will be a roll call vote to reconvene CPAC immediately, including all prior members. Despite repeated requests that written comments be included in the minutes, none of, my none of the comments by me or John Mraz were included. Repeated questions from the public during quote unquote public comment at broadcast meetings are ignored. Public comments or committee reports were not read and questions were not answered. Questions emailed were not answered. Ethical leadership is a top down paradigm and this board really must insist on profound changes. I hope you will, you will and know many others share this point of view. We are here to help and we hope this board will reach out. Start by calling the Community Engagement Task Force to meet in the Supreme Court. You do not have to do this alone. You were not elected to serve in a vacuum, but as a representative of our, our community. Please accept the help and assistance of the experts in the community and do not allow one person in some imagine, imagined vendetta and falsehoods to stop you from accepting help from someone with knowledge and expertise to assist during this crisis. I know how hard these decisions are. You have some expert, you have someone expert available. Ask yourself who is stopping you and why they don't want an expert in finance, forensic audit, school board governance, and budgets to help. Ask yourselves, given the facts, wouldn't it make sense to accept expert assistance with someone with over 10 years attending meetings and who has firsthand knowledge of these issues and events? And ask yourself who would want to stop someone with all the knowledge for helping and why I'm here because I know what is going on. I'm here because we can fix this. I'm here because our students, staff and community deserve better. Next public comment is from Lori Joyce regarding the Wheatland project. I have a question concerning the Wheatland project. I'm having trouble finding what this developer's intentions are. Are these 200 plus apartments going to be section eight housing? As far as the school district, my question is, what would be our motivation to incur so many more students in our very overpopulated district? My apologies for having you repeat information that was presented at the workshop. I did not attend. Many thanks. Last public comment is from Mr. Mraz. FYI, I downloaded the workshop agenda last night and did not, and it did not include the pandemic report when it was posted. Unfair for us to see it today. That concludes the second section of public comment. Thank you. Uh, I did want to circle back to Ms. Joyce's comment, uh, questions. Um, the as well, the developer and uh, Mr. Calter Jerome, please correct me if I'm wrong. The developer was looking at those units to be predominantly one and two bedroom. They were not section eight, they were not proposed as section eight housing. And they, based on another, um, they have a unit in Norristown. So they were looking at similar numbers and they're thinking that at most, I believe it's four children that they would estimate would be living in that facility. That, that was their estimate based on the projected units that they were going to be building in, in the facility. So um, while there's certainly no guarantee as to what um, you know? What number it would ultimately be? They were basing that off of their other facility, so that's how they came up with that projected number uh, based on the unit type and uh, their previous work. Great, thank you. Um, so again, not section eight, low number. Uh, and Dr. Any additional? Was that, I was going to ask if you had any additional follow up, Dr. Fangley. <laughs> Uh, Dr. Serini had her hand raised, I saw. Okay, uh, Dr. Serini. Thank you. I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that uh, children uh, under the age of 18 are a protected class under familial status, and I, I can't support a conversation that discusses um, the pro prohibiting of um, a protected class. So that's just something I must say. Uh, the so I, I need to clarify that nobody is discussing prohibition. There was a question asked as to whether or not it was Section 8 housing that was answered. There was a question asked as to projections from the uh, developer that was answered. We are not speaking as to where we stand on any individual, whether or not we are for or against. We are not speaking to that whatsoever. We are sharing the information that was shared with us by a developer. Ms. Bro.
Laura, you're muted. Okay. No, I, I just wanted to underscore that we do need to be very careful about how we word things. Um, and so that's true. And uh, I, it's something worth thinking about carefully. But we didn't, nobody said we were prohibiting students or no, I know that franchising students. What I'm saying is when we talk about families and kids, just keep that in mind, okay? Keep what in mind? I, I don't understand what this conversation is turning into. I'm sorry, but uh, the, the, Dr. Serini asked a question right, Dave, um, about Dave, uh, and, after, not, okay. nothing so unsavory just, was indicated. Okay, let's, let's move forward. Uh, We've all stated our points. We're going to move forward at this time. Dr. Fagley, would you like to address anything in addition regarding the public comments? Um, regarding length of public comment, it has long been known as three minutes. Uh, just so everyone knows, I was calling at three minutes and still giving 30 seconds longer. So the comments actually went on for three minutes and 30 seconds. So uh, we were trying our best to make sure we gave everyone a fair uh, shot at that. Other than that, I think everything else has been addressed. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. So at this time, um, we will adjourn to executive session and come back for a vote at the conclusion of executive session, which may, just so the public is aware, it may take some time for the discussions. Um, it is regarding uh, the superintendent evaluation and um, bonus vote. So we will as a board be going into that exec session, it will, you will notice as the public, we will put up a screen and then uh, come back for a vote. So at this time, we are adjourning to executive session and Dr. Fagley, would you please open the breakout? Can we take a couple of minute break? Yes, we will. It is 822. So at 824, we will, I will call to order the executive, uh, 825, I'm gonna be generous. 825, <laughs> I will call to order the executive session. Thank you. our meeting on the short 22nd. We just returned from executive session where we were discussing um, superintendent evaluation. As part of his current contract, which expires June 30th of this year, it is still that previous contract where there was just, there are bonuses in it. The bonus can be from zero to 8%. Um, his new contract, which has no bonuses, starts July 1. Uh, so we are in that original contract. Um, we did have discussions and in concluding discussions with Dr. Fagley, he has graciously agreed to waive his bonus this year. So while if he had not, we would at this point be voting on a percentage, um, he, his waiving the bonus negates that need. However, we did wanna share this information with the public, make sure that everybody knew um, that we had wrapped up that current contract. Um, moving forward, that particular piece will no longer be a discussion. So this, this will not be the same next year. Um, to that end, and I actually don't have up on my screen whether or not anybody's hands raised, um, I would like to thank Dr. Fagley um, for his generosity and understanding. You know, this is a very challenging time financially and we're, we're all struggling. And so it is greatly appreciated, um, the considerations made. And, and um, at this time, I would like... Um, to call on Mr. Goldberg. Uh, Blake, I'm sorry to correct you, uh, correct you, but I'm going to do it slightly because the the uh, changing one term uh, will you know makes a big difference. Dr. Fagley uh, didn't just agree to uh, forgo his bonus; he actually offered uh, mm -hmm. to forgo his bonus. So that's a it's a it's a difference with quite a distinction. And I want to commend him uh, on that. And I I didn't want to interrupt you or correct you, uh, Blake, but I think that's important in this scenario. Absolutely, and I greatly appreciate that. You're 100% correct. Yes, yes, he offered to waive his bonus. So I, yes, thank you for that correction. Absolutely appropriate. Um, and so at this time, that actually concludes this meeting for the 22nd. We are now adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening.
Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.